There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Thalia, and I'm an intern here at Utah State for the Office of Empowering Teaching Excellence. And today I'm here to welcome Elizabeth Cox and Michael Dubon. Um, and I'm going to pass the floor to them so they could introduce themselves and start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So I am Elizabeth Cox and Michael and I teach. Um, well, we will introduce ourselves as we go. Michael, is there anything you wanted to say at the start? Um, yep, uh, that's my name is Michael Dubon. So um, that's uh, I think everything else will be revealed as we go through through the context of the of the presentation. <laughs> All right, and we will um we'll try to keep an eye on the chat. And but if we uh, if you something comes up, feel free to type it in. Even if we don't get to it right away, we'll have a teeny bit of time at the end. So thanks for joining us for our presentation on building community and self monitoring through informal accountability groups. Um, as our keynote speaker said, so you can plan your attention. We've got three chunks here. So we'll take a few minutes just to give you um, the problem that we are experiencing and the action steps we took. We wanna give the bulk of time to introduce how we actually uh, use this activity in class in our current format and give you a chance to experience it. And then we should have a few minutes to share just a teeny bit of survey information and, and entertain a few questions. So just to give you some context, uh, the, one of the courses that Michael and I teach here at SUU is called SU 1020 Academic Recovery. It's a one credit class and students are required to take it, it's required support when they find themselves that, uh, with a cumulative GPA that has dropped below 2.0. So their academic standing has changed to a certain level of academic probation. We do also have students elect to take the class, either recommended by their advisor or they find it on their own. And these are our three course learning outcomes. And I posted them here because they directly align with two of the parts of the, our title in our presentation. So the self-monitoring part relates to the first two learning outcomes and the idea of building community is directly reflected in the third. So in addition to the extensive research literature that exists about how self-regulation and self-monitoring and a sense of community and interaction with campus resources, support student progress, they, that also aligns with our course learning outcome. So if you, whatever your before times looked like for us pre-pandemic, we were all face-to-face, -face. but initially uh, we were noticing a few things that we wanted to address. So the students already had weekly journal entries where they would give us updates about their progress on their semester goals, but we noticed that some students, their submissions were kind of inconsistent. Some of their responses were a bit superficial. And then we also got early feedback. This has been consistent every semester we've run our course is that already students are feeling isolated. So don't even consider social distancing. Don't even consider being at home and not on campus, distributed learning. Students already feel like they're the only one who is experiencing this kind of struggle and there's a lot of emotions involved. So we already have isolation, <laughs> feelings of isolation to begin with. And we noticed that since students were submitting these goal updates just to us, there was no benefit they were gaining. They weren't able to see that other students, yes, are seeing the same, experiencing similar kinds of struggles and successes. So our pre-pandemic action step was to dedicate the first 10 to 15 minute class, minutes of most classes to dividing or breaking them up into small groups. So two to five students, depending on who was there, um, it would change week to week, depending on where students sat in the room. So students, we continued the practice of setting semester goals in week three, and then we would add these informal get togethers at the start of most classes after that. So you see on the right, we would ask them to get together, share out their progress, and then assign four awards to give it a little bit of structure. Um, so who has had made the most progress toward their goal? Who's experienced the biggest challenge? Who had the best experience with the resource? And who has the best step to try in the week ahead, trying to model that planning? And they would just email the instructor. We, they would designate or, you know, nose goes, whatever. Who's going to send the email to the instructor when that 10 to 15 minutes is up? So as we started this past fall, we had additional wrinkle of now we have to be ready for the whole potpourri of modality options. So officially we have a face-to-face -face course that we're broadcasting live. So students might be attending um, 
through Zoom, but that might be inconsistent week to week. And then also we were prepared to support students who might not even be there during class time, who might interact with our course materials asynchronously. So what you see here is the modification that we made. On the left is what students would see at the top level in the Canvas modules. We included a dedicated Canvas assignment page for each of these accountability group activities that happen in most weeks, starting in week four. If a student clicks on what you see on the left, then they open up a Canvas page that looks like what you see in the middle. And you can see peeking out at the bottom, this blue rectangle, and what you see on the right is the full screen version of what we, the tool we use, which is called Padlet. And so Padlet is an online bulletin board, essentially. It's free to use, but you can also um, get a paid account. And that was the structure that we incorporated. So both face-to-face and remote learners could access this same, 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 um, same resource. And so if you were they were students were face to face, we would just have them turn to students who are closest to them. The students who are our, our Zoomies, as opposed to our roomies, um, would put them in break small breakout rooms through Zoom. And if a student was not present or was having tech issues and couldn't join, they could they could complete the awards just for themselves. So now we want um, to make sure you have a chance to practice some of this and experience it, see if it might work for you. So Michael's gonna introduce the activity and give you a chance to try. Yeah, so we'd like to invite you to try to experience it, these accountability groups uh, and accessing the Padlet in the similar way to the, our, the way our students do. So first um, in the chat, um, we will be putting this tiny URL for this Padlet. And uh, so please click on that link or type the tiny URL into your web browser. And then secondly, you will be receiving an invite to join a breakout room. And so once you're in the breakout room, um, please just briefly uh, say who you are and if you can have your video on. Um, and what you're going to be discussing once you're in the breakout room is progress on a semester goal, um, what the semester goal is and what kind of progress you've made towards it. And you're going to um, similarly assign awards in the Padlet like our students would. And you're going to also similarly elect one person to create the group Padlet post. And so if we look on the Padlet um, in the lower right hand corner, there's a plus button. And that is what you'll need to click in order to um, create your Padlet post and uh, with the headline of your group members names on it. And so um, as we're winding down, you'll get a one minute warning to rejoin the main session. And uh, then we'll go from there. So let us know if you have any questions. And otherwise, we'll be putting you into breakout rooms right now. If you have any questions, let us know or type in the chat. Mm -hmm. If you have any trouble seeing the invitation to the breakout room, just let us know. <laughs> Lindsay, any questions? Oh, there she goes. <laughs> <laughs> and so when should we bring everyone back then? So that was about 318. So let's do Let's see. Um at 324 um could, could we close the breakout room so then they have that last minute to finish up? Yeah, I'll do that. And just get and send them a message. At, I think it automatically sends a message that breakout rooms are closing, but send a message. All right, here's the last minute. Just get as far as you can. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, it sends them, it gives them a minute before they have to rejoin. That right. That's too. Awesome. Thank you, Thalia. Like you said, Elizabeth, leave, leave everyone wanting more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a teaser. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, similarly with my my biweekly writing group, we started sharing out our goals uh, for the week, for the next two weeks, and then our progress too. So that's been a good format for us as writers as well. Um, Mark made a comment about grading. So if there's time, I want to address that, that this is not an activity that um, that is scored. Definitely. Currently in our current practice. But that the corresponding, um, well, that's enough to be said, I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if someone's watching this recorded presentation, you get a behind the scenes look to what's going on during the breakout room. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I was just thinking, I was like, I don't know if I should pause it right now or. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> I'm always hesitant to pause because then I'm worried I won't remember <laughs> to, push to unpause. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> but that's totally up to you. Yeah. If you'd like to pause, that's fine. Either way, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> no, I think it's okay. The behind the scenes is nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a blooper reel. Yes. <laughs> so if you are joining us uh, and, and watching this recording later, know that what students are or what our students pseudo students are experiencing is looking like this. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty realistic. Some people have started, some people haven't. Um, this is pretty good. Everyone's put their names up. We don't always get that. We've got the categories there, starting to get some data. And I think that's one of the cool things about this activity too, is just seeing it in real time. As, as people are posting and reasoning it out, deleting, editing, rephrasing. <laughs> I do have, sometimes students know, say, have mentioned that when this is projected on the screen while they're working, they get a little self-conscious. So I've started minimizing it or not projecting this part while they're working. Um, they, they feel a little exposed sometimes. It's okay once they're all done, but while they're typing, they get a little distracted like, it's in real time showing up on the big screen. I see, I see. Yeah, I, I hadn't been putting up on the, on the big screen in my classes, but I can totally see how that would happen until, until after it was done too. And again, benefit of getting the behind the scenes tour is that um, you see that if students are working on their phone and they have a small screen, a lot of times these posts just automatically show up on the far left. So you might get, if you have a large class, you might get several posts overlapping down in the bottom left, but as the instructor or whoever created the Padlet, you can drag them back out and separate them. All right, yep, so if we can send them a one minute warning, that would be great. All right, I sent out that warning. Okay, thanks. And um, Michael, uh, if you wanna say, like we talked about, like, sorry, we cut you short. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that sounds good. <laughs> So I'll wait till everyone's back in, back in here. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. 
Welcome back, everyone. Awesome. Welcome back, everyone. And as you're coming back, if you have any reactions or observations, please type them in the chat and then we'll, we'll keep on pushing forward. Okay. Ready? All right, everyone. Thanks again for participating. We know it's a short amount of time. We just wanted to leave you wanting more. Um, but um, as you might have noticed, the Padlet you were working on maybe looks uh, something similar to what we see here. And so this is an image, a screenshot from a completed accountability group activity in one of our 1020 sections. So I just wanted to point you all to some insights uh, that we have from the completed activity. So uh, you, one thing you might notice is the varying degrees of detail and completedness. And you might notice that was in the Padlet you posted too as well. And so I wanted to point to uh, the lower right hand po post here, the student Kylie. She wrote that she's made pretty good progress towards her goal. Now, pretty good progress is kind of vague, ambiguous. We're not sure quite what that means, but what it does demonstrate is evidence of communication and having discussion, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, another student that I'd like to point us to is in the middle post, the student Stockton, who wrote he, uh, his biggest challenge was problems with procrastination. So once the activity, uh, all the posts had been made and we came back as a class, um, when Stockton was asked uh, by us what was his game plan for tackling his problems with procrastination, it actually led to a, a classroom discussion on how Stockton could help overcome his uh, procrastination video game problems, which led to other students chiming in in terms of the thousands of hours they would logged in video games themselves. So that just goes to show that uh, even a 60 second follow up with this kind of activity can lead to um, meaningful classroom discussion that can help support that community and rapport building. Um, then logistically, as Elizabeth mentioned, if students aren't able to connect to the breakout rooms or um, attend synchronously, then we have them post um, independently um, and they still get the benefit of seeing their uh, peers post to help um, with that, uh, that feeling of isolation. And then lastly, uh, we have the uh, prompts being fairly consistent most of the time with most progress, biggest challenge, best experience with the resource. But one change we've made from week to week is making the last prompt topical, in this case, closest to finishing midterm progress report based on this uh, week's lesson. And that change was made from some, based on some uh, survey data that Elizabeth will outline in a moment. Thanks, Michael. All right, again, two whole minutes. Okay, so um, the survey that data that Michael mentioned, it's pretty limited. We incorporated one open-ended question into our end of course survey. That's a, just a Canvas survey. So it's a graded assignment. It's just scored for completion, but we don't look at any of the responses until all the course grades are submitted. And that's what we tell the students. Um, so based on the responses, we feel like they're pretty honest because we see some comments that you wouldn't make if you were worried about it affecting your grade. Um, so we just asked them, should we keep accountability groups? Why or why not? And if you break down these open and respond responses, most of the responses are positive. There are a few um, sort of in the middle, yes and no, and then just a few that said, nope, this was not helpful. And the data that we have, this represents the number of surveys we received. It's about probably about 25% of the total students enrolled, but a much higher percent of active students. Um, and again, so this is part of a survey at the end of the course that has both closed and open-ended questions. But it's really quotes like this that keep us wanting to keep tweaking what we're doing and continue this accountability group in some form. So I really like the groups. I mean, yes, it's awkward to talk to others about your life, but it keeps you held accountable for the goals you set for yourself. It really helped me out. Um, and so that brings us to the end, 329. And we would love to continue this conversation. So if you've done something similar or you wanna follow up on the logistics, those for those of you who are teaching asynchronously, Michael teaches an asynchronous version of, the, of this 1020 course. And he's used a tool called Flipgrid to do a version of what we just experienced or what you practice with Padlet. And he actually recorded a great ideas for teaching for this conference. So if you're curious to check that out, look, look that up or message him, he'd be happy to share. And I don't know if we're allowed to stay in this room any longer, but we'll be here. So if you do have questions um, that have come up, we're happy to stick around. And uh, Mark, you had mentioned something about students interacting and when it's for a grade, just to clarify, these accountability groups are not a graded assignment in our course. They're just part of what we do to, to kick off class. Um, so, so we do think that is um, that works pretty well. But again, thanks for participating. We're around. If you have questions, feel free to type them in. 
Yeah, and remember, you guys can also continue the com conversation on Mighty Networks, um, where you guys join to come on to this. That's a really good way. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Michael, for coming here today and talking to us about this. It was very interesting. And um, before we go, I put a link in the chat for you guys to take a survey and give some feedback on how the session went. But yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark, to your question about FERPA, um, I, it, we can follow up one-on-one -on -one via email. So I make sure I understand your question, but we do tell students like to, they do not have to share anything they're not comfortable with, with small groups within their small groups, but um, I'd love to follow up on that topic with you.